Hey guys, Nicole here with Obscure Reptiles and Caging, and today we're going to be talking about Nidovirus and ball pythons. So let's get started. Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about a wide range of illnesses, several different things. We're going to kind of focus on Nidovirus because it's something that I've done the most research on lately. Um, but we're going to talk about testing, things to look for, what is it, what are these different things, um, and places you can go to actually get tests done. So for you guys who do not know, nidovirus is an illness that can happen in ball pythons. It's been something that's been happening since 2013. Uh, I will link and put below the actual paper research papers that I have been reading and researching on. Um, I've been trying to research on just about anything ball python for the last 10 years, and there's actually been a huge spike in research for things like nidovirus because of COVID. 19. So, needle virus specifically is something that is very bad if you were to have a collection of animals or even just a pet to have. Um, basically what it is, is it tends to look like a respiratory infection in your ball python. Uh, as of right now, I'm going with all the research that I've read. If you guys have any different insights, you've heard of other things, please put them in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. But as, as far as I've gained, it looks like a respiratory infection. But the symptoms come and go, and the animal sometimes will still eat. So if you have a general ball python that has a uh, respiratory infection, it's going to have symptoms like it's going to be drooling, excessive saliva, they're going to be wheezing, uh, there are going to be a lot of bubbles forming on the sides of their mouth because of uh, how much drool they have and how hard it is for them to breathe. Uh, they're not going to eat, they're going to be lethargic, and so, a lot of times you'll see like slime on the sides of the cages, and they're going to be making little sounds, you're going to actually hear them. It's something that you, you know right away when your animal has it. Sometimes the symptoms are minor in the beginning, but if your animal has a respiratory infection, that's something that you definitely will know. Now the thing is, a lot of people try to do home remedies where you take, let's say, a humidifier, you put different types of medicine in there, and you put your animal in the box, you raise the temperature, raise the humidity, do all the different things that you read online, and it seems your animal is getting better. They start eating for you. But then in a few months, the animal starts acting the same way again, but they're still eating, which is why it can be so dangerous. They have a few theories on how this is spread, but they don't know for sure. So let's say the animal looks okay for six months a year, it hasn't had any more problems, you start breeding that animal, or you upgrade, switch cages, you put a new animal in the cage that one was in and it's not fully sanitized. Now you can be spreading, whether it's airborne, um, it's from saliva, from touch, from whatever it is, you can easily be transferring that. Let's say you have a collection of 100 and that one animal bred to five, then one of those females bred to another male, then he bred to five. Then just from that, you have 22 animals that could have this illness. Another thing I've come across in researching is some animals are asymptomatic, like COVID. You could have it, but not be passing it. You don't know you have it. You don't show symptoms, you feel fine, and you're passing it along. So that's another issue with having um, an illness like this. There are other ones. Um, I'm actually going to show you guys a form. There's actually ways to actually test for this in your ball python in your collection. So if you're a breeder, you're um, trying to grow a collection, um, what I do personally is if I get new animals in or new animals from different places I've never purchased from before, breeders I don't know that well, I'll actually get tests done and it takes a little bit of time, but that's why I always quarantine my animals for a minimum of three months. That gives me time to see if the animal has things like mites. So I'm going to actually show you one of the forms. So the place is actually called Research Associates Lab. It's located in Texas. So you can get all sorts of things. You get things tested for your tortoise, for a lizard, for snakes. There's DNA type thing. I don't even know what a lot of this stuff on here is, but uh, you would be testing for down here. It shows you nidovirus. So what you do is I always have a pack. You buy them by the pack. I have a pack of 100 just to make sure I always have them. And if anyone has ever gotten COVID testing when you had to put the swab in your nose, it's kind of the same thing, but it's in a snake's mouth. Um, they come like this, you crack it open, and you actually put the swab really, really well all in um, the back of the mouth, the side, don't want to catch on their teeth, and make sure you put it right back in here. And um, all of them are different, but when it comes to specifically the needle virus one, you have to ship it overnight. So if you're, and it's only $25 currently to test per animal. So if it's, let's say 50 bucks to ship overnight, but only $25 to test, you might as well ship out a couple of test kits at a time. It's a really good idea, especially if you have breeding males to test them, because if you know every female they've been to, let's say if they happen to be positive, 
then you know where to start tracking it. But again, they don't know how it's spread. We have been incredibly lucky to never have a positive result. We have never had any issues with it, but we do like to test just to make sure we're ahead of the game. I've even read that it can be passed down from mother to baby. So even if mom has no symptoms, dad has no symptoms, you could have babies that have it. So we wanna make sure we're producing the top of the line, the best animals possible. Um, and this is something that's not talked about openly with a lot of breeders. I've heard a lot of people say that they do testing, but I've never seen them publicly admit it, only through like messages, stuff like that. If you get into breeders who have a few hundred, a few thousand animals, the chances of them having it is probably pretty high, especially if they're not testing for it. So if you're trying to be a good reputable breeder, or you have ball python that's starting to act weird, have anything that seems like it's actually got some sort of respiratory thing, but um, it keeps going away or the animal is still eating, I would highly recommend doing a needle virus test. Especially if you've only got one or two snakes, I would actually recommend going into your vet's office so they can fully look at that animal. Uh, there's a few different things that kind of have the same symptoms or it look or could appear the same as needle virus and there's also a few other illnesses that can inter intermingle with it. So I've heard of a few different things basically if they have one then they're going to have the other. Uh, don't quote me on what they're called. This is again just research. I'm, I'm definitely not a scientist uh, but this is just things that I have gathered over the last couple of years and it's nice that there's more research being done on it so that there's more information out there for the public to understand it better. This is a big reason why I like to have more bins than what's necessary for my snakes. For example, let's say you haven't quarantined an animal and you decide to clean everybody. Where do you put your snake when you clean? Are you one of the people who just put a brand new cleaned bin in and then you go take the old one out? Or do you keep your snake in the same bin in the same slot? If you're moving that animal from side to spot to spot and you're, let's say you use a rack system. Let's say you're using one like this. And this snake, this bin, the reason why we actually keep them in the same bin and the same spot, that's why we actually put this here. A lot of breeders put it on the bin because the whole underside of this is very difficult to clean. So if I was to switch this female and this female and I just swap them, even though they're in their same bin, the whole top side of here has not been cleaned and sanitized or it would be very difficult to get every nook and cranny. Or also for the people who go and they take a snake, put them in a spare bin, clean everything, then put them back, but they use that exact same spare bin with every different snake. That's also cross-contaminating everything. So if you're not testing, you're not quarantining, um, and you're just kind of mingling everybody, that if you end up having a bad illness or something like this, it's gonna be very difficult for you to fix and correct. So just make sure you're kind of thinking about those things when you have a bunch of reptiles, uh, especially if you're trying to breed and you're trying to be professional. I have seen a couple of videos on needle virus, especially with people who actually already have it, and then they start speaking out and talking about all the testing, all the changes that they've done, but my goal here is to educate people about it before it happens and hopefully prevent it from happening to other people. Uh, it can also be transferred from, I've seen, from different species. So for example, from ball pythons to boa species. So that's another thing. If you keep two different types of species together, if you got one sick, chances are you might get the other one sick and you don't want any of that. I've heard a few different types of species that it can intermingle with. So we wanna make sure we all are knowledgeable. We're testing, we're doing everything that we should do. And like I said, to just do a little swab, $25 per snake. Even if you've got 10 snakes, you could easily test everybody. Uh, $50 for shipping overnight and you could have some good peace of mind that your animals um, are all perfectly healthy, especially if you're breeding. But I hope this helped you guys out, especially if you didn't know about needle virus. I could do a way more in-depth one and actually go through the research paper. I just wanted to touch on some important points just so you guys have a little bit of basic knowledge on it. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. We do new videos every single week. If you haven't already, please subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video.